What is up, YouTube? It's Derby Lord of Wellmore here. Oh, and, I, <laughs> and I got Noah here. This is the cast oh, iron God. video that you guys voted on. It is happening right here, right now. We are doing this video. So, for our parts, we got this awesome broken in such an awesome way. What is this? <laughs> Yeah, grill burner. Here we go. I forgot what it was for a second. I was like, what is this thing again? Cast iron, that's all we know. Yeah, it's cast iron. That's all we need to know. A pot. This is actually, this break right here is very common. And then, <laughs> this thing Noah fudged up. <laughs> this was Pretty not much. me. This is not me for once. Yeah. You can blame it on Noah. Yeah. We are going to attempt to fix this one. This might be a lost cause. Yeah, it might be a lost cause. But you know what? Oh, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot and see if we can fix it. We should put $100 worth of electrodes into it. Yeah. Why not? We ain't got nothing better to do for our time. So, we're, the first thing we're going to talk about about cast iron is why it is so different than other kinds of steel. It is, first of all, cast iron is... If you look at it, it's not like normal steel when it is extruded at the plant, when they make the steel, all the molecules and everything kind of roll in a single line, just like you would have grains in wood. Cast iron, since it's just dumped into a mold, it all the molecules are in random spots, which you can see when it breaks versus how when you would see a piece of like A36 mild steel break, it breaks very differently. That's why you see the grain structure. As you see right here. You can see this grain structure and that is from it being, it's cast. So it's very random. And because of this, it can be extremely brittle. This was actually one whole good piece. And for this demonstration's sake for this video, I took a sledgehammer to it. So that's what we do here. Reason. Yes, educational reason. It ain't broke till it's derba broke. <laughs> Just like this dump truck. It's not broke until it's derba broke. Stop telling me to sell it, guys. I'm not selling it. Jesus, grow up. <laughs> so, there are tools I highly recommend you get if you're going to be welding cast iron and okay I don't want to say you have to have these but it's very 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 highly recommended that you do at least an oxyacetylene torch preferably a rosebud a laser thermal indicator these things are awesome these things are fantastic Dang on, my phone's 116 degrees. God, it's hot out here. Do you, I don't even know if we need to preheat this shit before we weld it. Maybe a little bit. All right. Um, and of course, if you're going to be doing the brazing process, which we're going to demonstrate today, you want the little welding tip or brazing tip or whatever for your oxyacetylene torch. And of course, what I mentioned before, the rosebud. That makes heating up and controlling the heat extremely easy. You can do it with a regular cutting tip, but I, the rosebud, man, it makes things so much easier, guys. It's so much quicker. I highly, highly, highly recommend using the rosebud for heating stuff up it heats more evenly it's not so direct and all of that stuff and that's another thing we're going to talk about so when heating up a part to when you're preheating a part like this we don't want to put all the heat right in this area we want the most the majority of our heat let's say about 60 percent of the most of our heat right here because this is where we're going to be welding but the, the reason that people have so much trouble welding cast iron is the temperature change shock effect. I don't, that's probably not how yeah, it, sounds, it, yeah, that sounds scientific enough, right? Yeah, it's, temperature it's, change shock effect. They have a, some crystallization or something process. I, uh, we, all we know is it cracks if you just weld it. Yeah. So yeah, it'll crack if you just weld it. Why? Because the temperature changes too rapidly because mm -hmm. you are going from 
what it is right now is like 116 degrees when I measured this to 3,000 degrees and then back to a resting of 500 degrees. On A36 steel that's very flexible, very malleable considerably, it's not an issue. But with cast iron, because of how it is, how it is casted, it's a serious issue. So you want to minimize that. You want to minimize the shock of the transition. Now there are several ways you can do this. Preheating is one, post heating is another, and post cooling is another. So if say you brought me a part like this, I would probably use these brazing rods right here. This is kind of my go-to for most cast iron because of how simple it is. These brazing rods you use with the oxyacetylene torch. They're flux coated rods. They're cheap at Tractor Supply, Northern Tools, or wherever you go to get such things. You can see I've had this forever. It's worn out. Can you hold this Noah while I yeah. try to open this thing? What's left of it? Ugh. What's left of it? Uh, and the flux goes everywhere. Good thing I'm not stick electrodes. Now, the flux doesn't have to be in, like, complete perfect shape because the, the flux is on here is kind of a, hey, look, it's got flux. You know, you, you don't need the flux for every single dip like you would on a stick electrode. The flux is just kind of, it's there. It's an add-on. You can get these bare and then buy a little cup of flux you dip in it and as you need it. But it, a flux helps out a lot. And I kind of like having it all in one because, you know, I'm one of those people. I'm lazy. But, the, you know, we're just going to say real quick what we do with this. Now, we're brazing. For those of you who don't know what brazing is, you're not actually melting the, the steel, cast iron, whatever. You're not melting it. You're getting it hot enough that this will melt into it. The flux just cleans it up. So the bronze, silicon bronze is what this is made out of, the gold stuff. Will just drip right into it. It'll just shoot. It'll wet right in it. It just soaks right into the pores. And almost it, like a glue kind yeah, of Yeah, it's almost like a temperature glue. Yeah, exactly. A temperature activated glue. And it just bloop droops drips right in as you heat it up. And the thing about this is you never get the cast iron really hot enough to crack. Mm -hmm. So it's really good if you're not comfortable with cast iron and it doesn't have to be machined. You cannot machine this. So you would not want to use this on an engine block or any kind of critical component that has to be machined. But for stuff like this and this pan right here and this, whatever it was, it is a fantastic thing for those of you who are not very comfortable with it because it doesn't get that hot. And on a day like today, you really don't, as hot as it is, almost 100 degrees out here, high humidity, it sucks. <laughs> you would really, you could just set it out here on the back of the truck and let the sun cool it off. It'll be fine. However, in the winter, you would probably have to do a little post heating control to make sure that it kind of goes out right. And you really don't need to peen this. Now we're going to talk about peening. So... You really don't need to peen this, so we're not going to talk about it for this. We're going to go on to our different cast iron welding rods. Oh, I'm going to sit them here. Yeah. So we have Nomacast. This is basically for building up an area. Like as you see, this vice Noah has here. It's very, it's very gouged out. It's very deep. Areas like this, you would want to use a Nomacast to start off. Nomacast is cheap. Nomacast is extremely cheap compared to the nickel rods. So you would want to use the Nomacast to weld these up first to fill it up. And then do one of your final passes with either nickel 5.5, which is cheaper. And then this expensive stuff Noah brought along to brag about how much, about how much money he has. I don't know about all that. Yeah, this nickel 99, which is very expensive. These are both, this is nickel 99 is about $4 a rod. Nickel 55 is about $3 a rod. And you, I guarantee you, if you call me out the weld cast iron, you are going to see that $3 for each rod I used on your invoice. All right, so just heads up, people. It's not cheap. Yeah, yeah, it's not cheap. Like this, 
this right here, what this nickel that? five five was almost forty dollars, and it came with like eleven mm. electrodes in yeah. it. That's almost yeah, it's about three dollars a rod. So that much money, you could get almost ten pounds of seventy eight. Yeah, I, that's ridiculous. And good ones too, yeah, like and, Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, Lincoln's exactly. Good ones are the Hobart Brothers brand. You know, there's a big difference between Hobart and Hobart Brothers. They're two different brands. We're, that's that's story for another time. <laughs> we're we're starting to get into another story, but. So for when you're stick welding, and these really ain't even stick welding, they're more of a braze, really, because none of it's stick well, none of it's really welding. These are really kind of a braze. It's really interesting to see. But when you're doing the stick method, because there's so much heat input to it, you have to get this preheated up to 350 degrees is what I use every time. It works every time. 350 degrees, it works every single time. Now, if I was brazing this, I probably would not even grind it out at all because of the way the braze wets in. But since we're going to be using the stick, I would take I take the grinder, kind of bevel the edges some, gives you something nice to follow, and it wets in it wets in very very well. You preheat 350 degrees. Now, the best thing you can possibly do for post heating post cooling is Get a wheelbarrow or a bucket or whatever. Fill it with sand. Mm -hmm. As soon as you're done welding it, and that's where you want it, don't grind it. Peen it. You're going to peen it. Where's my chipping hammer? Ah, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. You're going to peen it. And what I mean by peening, this is not, this is not peening. You're not, you're not beating the crap out of it. You're just going to go along the weld and be like, like that basically you're chicken pecking you ever had a bad 7018 everybody does it you weld an overhead 7018 and you're like shoo, shoo, shoo. come on come on come on and the next thing you know you're you're under there going ding 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 trying to gently get it off that's about what you're doing you're just going along the weld and doing that and what that does is you're literally causing the weld to push out like this to relieve the retracting stress. That cast iron gets hot, it pushes out like this into the crack. And as it cools, it starts pulling back. And what you're doing is you're taking that, that chipping hammer and you're almost imagining you are pushing that weld down and out. And it just relieves the stress. A little bit of that shock as it cools relieves the stress. So you'll paint it, you'll go around it, and as soon as you're done painting it, then you'll take it and you'll throw it in your sand and leave it overnight. You bury the thing in sand, leave it overnight, come back out, blow it out, you're good to go. Now, if it's a critical component like a engine head, before I stick it in the sand, I will wrap it in aluminum foil. Then I'll wrap it in, in saran wrap over the aluminum foil. The aluminum foil, then saran wrap, then tape the ends off then bury it in sand that way you don't have an engine head or or a engine block with sand in it i mean sand and engines don't go together very well fortunately we don't have any engine block components here today to demonstrate on so i won't be screwing up anything expensive <laughs> all right so i guess first things first my personal favorite we will go over brazing because the one i know that i won't screw up all right I only kill that camera while I get set up. You have a small bit, don't you? Oh yeah, I have a small bit too. This has blue point, but it's this one. Oh yeah. They're all Victor clones. Yes sir. Yeah, throw them in the trailer. And where? Oh, uh, drinks in the fridge and uh, well we don't want it out here because it's gonna it ain't gonna la it ain't gonna survive. Go. Well I thought you wanted some Next, but it looks like you already got some. A little, but the deal is it's too hot out here for that. Just put it, just put the drinks in the fridge and the candy on like the table or something. There we go. Alright. What do you want? What do you normally want to with that? That's a good question. 60, 15, no, God no, 68.
All right, now everybody gets all bent out of shape about all these different kinds of flames to use and stuff like that. Carburizing, oxidizing, do da do da do. I'm gonna move this a little bit. I will tell you the best thing I've ever been told. My instructor told me an angry torch don't work well. If your torch sounds angry, it's not gonna work well. So we don't want an angry torch. We want it to sound, and by not being angry, mean neutral. All right. So about like that, our black smoke disappears. We'll introduce some oxygen until we get it right about there. A happy flame. It doesn't sound angry. It doesn't sound like it's coming after me. Switch my helmet over to torch mode, or I ain't gonna be able to see what I'm doing. So. First thing I'll do, I'll run over the torch, we position our part, this one, it's not terribly critical that any of it sits exact, it's nice, I ain't gonna lie, we want it to sit real nice, hey, let me set some stuff on the bin on fire, I'm just gonna kinda go over it. Give it a, a preheat. Nothing too exact, nothing very scientific. This is not a complicated process. Anybody who can weld can learn how to do this in an hour at the most. You can weld, you can learn how to do this. I was a crazy kid at school who pulled this stuff out and started playing with it because I had extra time and I actually finished my projects on time while everybody else was still screwing around with simple projects. So I had time to learn this stuff. It's, very, it's a very valuable skill. So I'm just kind of going along the areas I know I'm going to weld. And they, they discolor slightly as they get hotter. And I'm going to take it and kind of spread that heat out through the entire part so there's no shock. I want to avoid the shock. Alright. Now... It's not like to melt the base metal. We're trying to just get it hot enough where our braids will fit. Let me put over to the side with flux. Flux helps out a lot. I like to do is I like to kind of blast it off like that so all the flux comes off first, cleans the area. Just like that. All the flux comes off, cleans the area. And then we melt the braids on. I'm not an expert at this. And as soon as that thing gets in there, we're tacking. I'm off. I'm off it just like that. Now we'll do the same thing over here. Keep that area up. There are people who can lay dimes at this stuff. I can't. I'm not going to lie to nobody. Yep. If it starts making noise, hissing noise like that, you got it too hot. Alright. some close-up shots on that camera we'll have to switch back and forth between them so after this is all said and done only not even the most 342 degree 44 478 the most there we go under 500 yeah under 500 right after that's really good it's not gonna stress the cast iron too much 
And for parts like this, I don't know why I touched that thing on. It ain't hot as shit. For being cast iron, it's really good. Because it's easy. It's easy. You don't have to remember all these preheat, post heat, and things like that. So I highly recommend this as your first way to start welding cast iron. We brace it technically, but welding cast iron. So my little vertical up and the cool thing about it is if you didn't quite get it all flush and smooth and all that you can run back you saw how I kind of ran back with the torch right here to even that area out you can do that with bracing now this you could just sit out here in the sun and let it cool and it'll be just fine however if it's cold, a cold winter day you may want to you know you know you may not want to just throw it outside in the cold it might be a little bit too much of a temperature shock i haven't had a problem with it but you know depending on what cold is for you cold for us around here is 40 degrees you know if you're up north in new york and all that and cold for you is below zero you probably want to do some kind of controlled pre-cooling or controlled post heating well, let's give this a whirl here Not open. Got a lot of flags there. there is a lot of slag to fight in that. <laughs> Batteries. Uh, is it not hooked up or is it low? Probably low. Yeah, it's low. It oh well, it, it don't matter because it's um, it's good. Now, ooh, it leaves a nice little burn bag. nasty slag in the burn bag. Yeah, it ain't too bad for never running this stuff before. <laughs> so we're gonna give it a second. We don't want it to get too hot. Where we at? We'll nail it with this. See where we're at. Now. Five, let it cool a little. I don't like running it too hot. Let it cool. We don't want to make. We don't want to be letting this thing sit at like seven, eight hundred degrees. You know, a good resting inner pass is going to be about four hundred degrees. We don't want to be going too hot. Oh, lazy. Turn on. We're we going to do the PhD of welding. The what? PhD. A welding P what? What? What is it? Put more heat in it or something Put like more that? More heat, not with cast. I thought that what we did. Yeah, I might have that wrong, but I'm putting that's how I remember somebody telling me it. It's got some nasty slag, I'll tell you what. Out of all the rods I've used, this one's scary. It's almost like a 6013 at times you're not paying attention. Pretty smoky too. Oh, I bet. Not the walls, but yeah. I think I probably should use 332 number cast on this. Yeah. All I have is eight. Can we turn it down a little bit? Yeah, go turn it down just a hair. It's kind of hot. Go over the hill.
left a crater. I tried to backfill the crater, but there was so much heat it started punching through. I was like, oh, ha, ha, ha. You made me run. Yeah, I know. Brush. What's that? He's a mechanical brush. Let me see if I can kind of... There we go. I'll give me a little something here. Yeah, I know we need to be turned down because we're going to go uphill. Check the heat again. Check the heat. Always checking the heat. Hit the laser. I don't even see where we're checking it. Where we're at. Oh, yeah. We're down to 350 in that area. So we're back to about our perfect um, our perfect weld. This probably might not be meant to go uphill, but we're gonna try anyway. It stays probably going down, but the problem is all that flag. Yeah, the way it's too much flag even thinking about going down. Oh, it just blew a hole. Are you falling through? Yeah. Come on, man. All right, sorry. See, this is why I make Joel do it and not me do it, so now I can make fun of him. No more. No, 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 no. That's alright, I'm gonna make him do nickel rock. I know, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my pay back. Go back with some blaze that. Oh. All right, guys, I'm going to burn the shit out of it. that you can go down and store and spend $20 to get a new one. Yeah, exactly. Just go do that. Save us both some headaches. There we go. I probably heated the F out of the piece. I'm waiting to get a pink. What? I'm waiting to get a, a red full of pink. This one, I probably need to bury in sand, but I didn't set up anything buried in sand. Now I'm painting it out. Over sand.
And you can see, you use the wire wheel, get the, you get all the paint off. Yeah. And this is China cast. We China cast. China yeah. cast. We ain't got a clue what it is. So we, it. we may or may not have bought this today just to bake it. <laughs> just may or may not. It's kind of hard to find cast iron when you're looking for it. <laughs> I know, but when you're looking for something to fix something, you're like, why do I have so much cast iron? Exactly. And you get rid of it and you're like, hey, I want to make a cast iron video. Exactly. And then it's like, why do I have so much good steel? Exactly. <laughs> I've only got tons of like manifolds at my house, old heads and stuff, call pots, but... Yeah, you know, an exhaust manifold. Yeah. I wish we had a broken exhaust manifold because that's so common. I was tempted to go to the junkyard this morning, but yeah. I was like, eh. Well, my neighbor's got a broken cast iron exhaust manifold on one of those trucks yeah. over there. He's going to bring me. So, well, I'll make a video about oh. how I fix that when that shows up. So, yeah. But this one, being that it's so thin, I didn't really want to do a whole bunch of prep on it. Because I'm afraid of blowing through it. So, we're just going to run with this. Hopefully, uh, if we want, we can uh, go on the back side and grind it out back gouge it if we feel like that necess necessary but so we're just gonna try to get it tacked up and go from there i guess yeah it's a good thing you we got your your nickel or you nickel five five this is five five yeah yeah those are 332 so yeah. that that'll be that'll probably be basically perfect for yeah what we're doing there won't be using like that eighth inch rod on that stuff that was probably not even three sixteenths thick yeah, blowing holes in it i'm gonna tone that thing down a little bit about 65. Alright. Oh, that's what already. Nah. Oh, that's thin and I'm not going to do too much more than that. Nickel's very forgiving. Yeah, that's what I knew. I've never had to run it, to be honest with you. Oh. Uh, it's very forgiving. I, I was very surprised at uh, how nice Nickel ran. When I ran nickel on that engine block, it yeah. was amazing. And I didn't even really do much for post heating, okay. except for throwing a torch on it every five minutes. Okay. Or probably every two minutes. But you know, throw a torch on yeah. it, keep it from heating up too much. And I, then I watched it cool. I checked it out, ground it, buffed it, no crap. So I was like, okay, cool, it's done. I can touch it, it's down to ambient temperature. So nickel's very forgiving. It's got a lot of stretch and- uh, A lot of gift to it. Yeah, it's got a lot of stretch and give to it, so it's really good for this. It's expensive, but it pays off. Oh, I love this stuff. Go ahead and try to get it tacked in place. So I said, yeah, not a lot of prep, just because the how thin it is, I don't want to take a whole lot of fucking metal away. It's real interesting. It looks almost like you're brazing. You may have to knock it off. There you go. Yeah, it'll form a little slag layer just like a 7018 will. Try and get as flat as possible. Not always ideal. Most circumstances probably aren't going to be flat. Like on the side of an engine block. Yeah. We'll give it a shot. Yeah, she runs. But the slag doesn't even bone, it just like goes around. Yeah, it's real it's really strange, yeah. It's something else. Oh, it can't be that bad. On the net. Hey. There we go. We shock peened it. Exactly. I'm gonna try this with no peen just to see. No peen? Alright, it's your part. Not new battery. Okay. Hard to run. It's just it's pretty much a little drag rod. 
I am kind of surprised about that. Okay. Heel still. Yeah, I'm not messing with that. And it all depends on what you're doing as to how crazy to go on stuff, like any project. A beat up palm trail, yes, if it's out by an eighth or sixteenth of an inch, yes, you want to get it right, but you don't spend all day trying to get that thing square. Exactly. Um, brand new trail that's pretty square, yes, you want it. But it's one of those things, um, and it all just depends on the customer as well. Yeah, and what, and what they're willing to pay for in the end. I'm gonna use one of your state pockets in my State pockets. <laughs> Don't zap yourself. Mm. Very shocking. Very shocking. Gonna get to the back side of it. There we go. Hey, look at that. Ingenuity. Oh, right, right there. Alright, let's try it. Oh, sorry. Oh man, I'm a little blind right there. Oh well, it looks really good. Well, that, that's hard to see. I ain't gonna lie, I can hardly tell that crack went off right there. Uh, well, I'm gonna blame my helmet. I need to change my lenses out in it. <laughs> but you did that meme. <laughs> you know that meme. Where the really nice pretty weld goes off the one side. Nice tail weld. Yeah. You, you just did that. <clears throat> oh yeah, nickel rods are very nice to run on casts. I like them. They but, they, but they only well, run well on pretty much clean casts. They don't like dirty casts. If we were to, if this is a custom project, would you grind that flush or would you just keep it like it is? I would probably grind this inside one yep. flush once it cooled off. The outside one, I'd leave it like it is. Yeah. I was thinking I want to do see what you would do. I'm going to get the wire wheel on it and I'm going to try just that little more crack right there. Alright. And then I think we'll throw it in the sand and see how it does later. Yep. Pull it out in a couple hours. Yeah. I ran at Wolf a little bit. It's aluminum bonds, a uh, MIG wire, very similar to that blazing we were doing. Uh, that stuff, we were running it, and at, when you get home, you stink. <laughs> and you just keep smelling it until you shower. It was just, the guy that always on it, he was telling me, yeah, you'll stink when you get home. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Got home, my wife was like, you want your bone in or something? I was like, no. Oh. And I said, I told him, I'm like, hey, you're right. <laughs> uh, I mean, not be the blind man and try this again. Yeah. Uh, I got hot. And nickel doesn't like to weld over nickel. about nickel is you cannot lay a layer you cannot weld a layer of nickel down and then put another layer of nickel over top that's why you keep nickel 55 or 99 in the truck with nomacast nomacast first then your nickel so all in all that doesn't seem too bad um from what i know like i said i don't really run this too often the whole I, I never have actually Maybe once, once or twice in school, but... Um, cast iron, from my experience, especially old used cast iron, is very, very difficult to get to run and look real pretty because cast iron is just dirty, nasty, and inconsistent. So, this right here is extremely good considering that it is cast iron. So, I would say, 
from my professional opinion that this is very very good especially if you've never ran this before it's yeah. very good now so we, we know there's people out there that can do this back backwards hand folded upside down whatever that yeah that's what they do and we are no means professionals at this yeah but as you see i've never ran this i'll be the first to admit it didn't come out too bad in my opinion it could be a lot worse um but yeah so like i said we're just trying to show y'all show y'all how we do it or how we have well, i'm trying to do it and how Joel does it um doesn't mean we're professionals this is just kind of a guideline in a sense yeah but your, your mileage may vary yes well let's throw it in the sand all right and my phone's getting mad at me because it's too hot out here it's like no it's like i don't want to work all right sweet wow that box fan feels really it good really does. <laughs> I was thinking about it. man it feels like it feels great in here to hook up my water ac unit my yeah all right so here is our piece pulled out of the pulled out the sand one of our pieces this is noma cast right here and then we have our phrase right here as you can see all nice and pretty these cracks are yeah these cracks are already here oh somebody's gonna say something they always do and that right there not too bad right there and then we have Noah's little pan there with nickel. One side. It actually welded a lot better than I thought it was going. Uh, yeah, pull out the sand here. All nice and cool. Good touch. See, touching it. None of this is still hot. It's all good. Sand is the trick, guys. I'm not lying. Sand is the trick to getting it to cool. If, when in doubt, just stick it in sand. If it's a small, small enough part, when in doubt, stick it in sand. It will save you every time. It takes out the guesswork. Preheat, remember, preheat the 350. 350 works for just about every kind of cast iron. Preheat the 350, and if it's small enough, stick it in sand. It'll save you every single time. All right. And we need nickel 5.5. We never got around to the 9.9, which I think we're just not going to do nickel 9.9 because it's so expensive. Yeah, I think 9.9 is supposed to be a little better, but that went a lot yeah. better than I thought. Oh, so. well, nickel 5.5 does awesome. Yeah, don't waste so, any use in the other one. Yeah, exactly. So, yep. These are the methods we use. We'll probably get some, um, some silicon bronze TIG rod and some aluminum bronze TIG rod someday. And we'll run with them. We'll show you all how that goes. But yeah, this is um, this is how we do cast. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. We got lots more videos. Be sure to go check out Noah's channel. He's on my main page. He's featured. So go check out his channel. Be sure to be sure to subscribe to his channel. He's got all sorts of good content. So thank you guys for watching. And you guys have a fantastic day. Take it easy. All right, guys. So this is something cool I wanted to show y'all about the cast iron. This is actually the next day, but this will all be in the same footage. Um, I decided this is the next day of this piece. See all these extra cracks? Yesterday, I decided to throw it on the ground about as hard as I could because I wanted to see how the braze and this Nomicast rod and everything reacted to an instantaneous shock of me just throwing it smack on the ground about as hard as I could. So, there's a really interesting stuff happen, especially right here on this braze. Right here, and if we look at this braze, you can see, you can see the toes. It wetted in real nice, except for where I started. You can see I have a really cold fusion right here. So when I dropped it, it actually separated. You can see I can put my knife under it right there. It separated right here. But everything else along here held just fine. In fact, it wound up along this edge splitting out. But the braze is still holding everything together. So it's pretty neat. And even cracked right here. But not at the braze itself. Cracked there and ran along there. But the braze is holding it together right there. So we'll go over to where the Noma cast is. This is where we're going to see some really interesting stuff. Right here at the Nomacast welds. 
and we can see I ground this area out I was going to fill it in because the crack had originally ran down here and out here I welded it up I blew a hole right here filled it up came back up and finished my weld I terminated my weld here and I didn't do a good job of terminating my weld in fact you can see how that crack uh, that crack runs along like there and then you can see where this crack split out right here making its way across and down so if I had finished all this right here I'd finished all of this up right here and welded it up this and this probably would not have even happened see that right there probably would not have even happened all right now and you can see that same crack follows this way up here all the way to here and stops before it even gets to Nomicast well I really like Nomicast this stuff seems to weld very nice and very strong now if we look inside of our crater that I didn't fill learning lessons guys I want y'all to see this stuff inside that crater see that crack right there as a crater crack starting because I was running too hot I welded up and paused to try and fill in my crater and I couldn't because I was running too hot I was using 8th inch rods I probably should have been using 332 and you can see that crater crack starting right there in the middle and that could have happened during that cooling process I can't remember if that was there before I threw it on the ground or not but I noticed it when I was inspecting it so this is why we fiddle with junk cast iron like this because we can learn this cool stuff so definitely fill in your craters and if you grind the area out fill it in you know you grind the area out definitely fill it in and make sure you get all the cracks you see this braze right here held up just fine no problems whatsoever out of this braze it ain't perfect but it held up during me throwing it on the ground. I don't even see any cracks around it. So, yeah, some non-scientific testing, but it'll show us a few things.